Deion Sanders is back in the news and Colorado is the subject. Also, water is wet, sky is blue, and I'm back on YouTube. Have a nice day. They all mean the exact same thing to me. But more recently, Sanders is in the news because an article came out by The Athletic talking about the 53 transfers that decided to leave or were told to leave Boulder because of Dion was bringing in his own luggage. He was bringing in Louie and then proceeds with his Louie high-profile luggage to go four and eight in the process. And a lot of people are kind of pissed off about everything that's being said, everything that's being descripted. But if you read through the lines, better yet, if you just read the damn article and not something you see on social media, you'd get the full context of this. So is Dion actually wrong for how he's handled the transfer portal over the last two years? Let's go ahead and discuss. But if you're new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. Make sure that you like, hit subscribe, comment down below. What are your thoughts on Dion Sanders and how he's handled the transfer portal since joining the forces of the Buffalo? Make sure that you're also telling your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, primetime fans, Buffalo fans, big football fans, and college football aficionados everywhere because we're talking college football ball every single day and on the race to become the number one platform talking about our favorite sport but more importantly we're here to become the number one college football community on youtube make sure you're following me on social media tiktok facebook instagram twitter at mr cole thompson and to make sure that you're keeping up with everything that we're doing you can always slide into my dms have a question read live on air at mr cole thompson or email me at cole thompson writing at gmail.com what to make of Dion's transfer portal comments. So for those of you that don't know, The Athletic is a paid subscription, so you have to have a subscription to read the article. Uh, Max Olson does a really nice job breaking down everything that goes on behind closed doors. And there's a lot of negative parts in it, a, a lot of things that just rub you the wrong way if you are a true college football fan. But most people don't have the funds to be able to afford what The Athletic is charging, so they read what's posted on social media. And the one quote tweet that has been going viral because of it's been on blasted through multiple scripts is a comment made by Xavier Smith, who said, you never even tried to get to know me. He was destroying guys' confidence. I had tears in my eyes. I was waltering upset. He didn't try to get to know me. Well, let's go ahead and go back to the very beginning when it comes to Colorado. Colorado was coming off of a 1-11 season underneath Carl Durrell. They lost almost every game by 30-plus points the year before, and Deion Sanders is a primetime name that does not know what it means to lose. And I mean that in the most sensical part of the word because the thing that people seem to always forget, Deion's been a winner since he arrived at Florida State. Deion was a winner when he was in high school. Deion crushed it in the MLB. Never made it to the Hall of Fame, but still was a high-profile figure with the Yankees, with other teams. He was great on the base paths. He also immediately transformed that into a media career, where literally he was the talk of all conversations. Whether it was on Barstool, whether it was on ESPN, NFL Network, he translated that into a winning persona when it came to his aura. And then he goes and becomes a high school coach and he wins there and he goes and becomes a head coach at Jackson State and he wins there. So he only knows what it is to be about winning. And the thing that he's doing is he's telling you, you guys went 1-11 and last year. That's not going to cut it for me. Sometimes hearing the bad part out loud is not always a bad thing. It's not like they're going out there and telling you you're the worst person that has ever existed or that you're probably a terrible player. He's saying. Look, there's things that need to change right away, and we need day one starters, guys who can come in, compete, make us better, put us on the right trajectory, because there's big plans ahead in Boulder, big ones, including a Big 12 conference championship potentially. Oh, spoiler alert, we're leaving the Pac-12 and going to a new conference. There's opportunities for us to be big in the college football playoff era. There's big time moments where you can go ahead and see a future envisioned with national titles. We believe that we can get there, and we need guys to set a foundation that can help us get to that pathway. And Dion's done that. That's what he's done. Now, there are some things that need to be taken into context. I personally have no problem with Dion pulling a kid aside, sitting him down, going, we think what's best for you in life is to be somewhere else. Listen, if there's no shot for you to see the field, you want to be able to play. You don't want to be frustrated with your situation. 
you usually are just going to go do what's next. In life in general, if you don't see growth or expansion or potential opportunities for the company, do you sit around for 40 years and then on your deathbed wonder what could have been? Or do you make that jump? Do you go ahead and take the risk? Do you go make some phone calls? Maybe you got to move a town over, but it's better pay. It's more substantial. It's more aggressiveness. It's more growth. It's more upside. It's every part of life. And sometimes your bosses will tell you, you're a good fit, just not for us. I've been told it a million times in my own broadcasting career. I've been told it a million times in my own writing career. I'm sometimes not the person you're looking for. Doesn't mean I'm not good at my job. Just means I'm not what you want. And so now you got to go ahead and do things on your own pathway. There are some things, though, I will say when it comes to Dion that ruffles some feathers. Number one, his social media presence. And this also comes with Shadur as well. Going out and calling out a player with Lord God on Twitter, not a good look. And I get it. For Shadur's sake, him saying, I don't know who he was, must have been mid. It's not a good look when you are now being talked about as a potential first-round pick. You are being talked about as the leader in the locker room. And I get the reasoning behind it. I get the sentiment that's your dad. That's your team. That's your roster. You want to be the leader because you are. You have the captain logo. You carry yourself in a certain demeanor. But time and place. And honestly, much like in today's society, as we don't read through the fine lines, we don't see all the full picture. We don't go ahead and look at something 100 miles away to fully grasp what's being transpired. We read what we want to read, and it makes us look bad. It's the same thing with Twitter. Dion could say things a certain way. We don't know what those conversations were entirely like. Yes, some were very positive. If you read the article, they actually are some positive feedback about Dion and how he acted. Listen, he told me that this was the best place for me. This was the best course of action for me. I'm thankful that he did. It's part of life. People hear it all the time. You hear it when you're a lawyer. You hear it when you're a doctor. You hear it in medical school. You hear it in journalism school. You hear it when you're in the workforce. You hear it everywhere. If you're not doing your job a certain way, people are going to call you out. And so there's no problem with it. The problem is the communication process on how we get here, how you deliver the news, how you transpire things, how you make sure that you cushion the blow. Those are areas where, yes, if you want to have a complaint, go ahead and argue with it about Dion, because there are probably certain ways that you want to address things. Going on Twitter and saying, Lord God, is not a positive way. Shadur going out and saying, I don't know who he is, but he was mid is not a positive way. You keep that internally. You don't need more backlash around a program going into a major year where people are starting to wonder, is this all flash or is this actually finesse? Because once you add in as many players as you want, players that you think are Louie, players that you think are prominent, players that you think are potentially wise, that's a good thing. But at the same time, if it doesn't work, Something's got to change. You get a year. You get one year. You went one and 11 before Dion got there. You improved by three wins. You got to four and eight. Now it's about figuring out, can this year, this year, you build off that? Can the transfers that recently came in, can they be effective and elevate this team from a four-win roster to a six-win roster or seven-win roster? Can the names that were brought in via the recruiting class, like a five-star in Jordan Seaton, Can they stabilize the roster and be a foundation for Dion after you lose Shiloh, Shadur, Travis Hunter, any other of these major players, Will Shepard being one from Vanderbilt, the transfer? Can they end up being a part of the process? And if so, well, then Dion might be onto something. If not, well, guess what? You're back to square one. And then the scrutiny gets to happen. You went four and eight last year. Anybody who's going to go ahead and start relishing that Dion made improvements, yes, he did. But it was nowhere near the hell of a height that you want. And by the way, if you have a problem with it, just do me your self a favor. If I don't like somebody, if I have an issue, I don't bring it up. But you, people in society, more so than anyone else, have no idea how to let things go and not let it affect your life. One of the biggest blessings that I have is not allowing outside noise. People who don't do anything for me have a say on what my life is. If I think I'm doing a good job and I'm getting good feedback for the people that matter, guess what? I'm going to continue to do it. But you, if you don't like Deion Sanders, don't read into the Deion Sanders crap. But more importantly, read through the fine freaking print. That's all you got to do.
Don't take a quote on Twitter and say, I know everything that was going on. Don't take a story that you saw on social media and say, yeah, I understand what's happening behind closed doors. No, you don't. No, you know, that would be like me reading the Lord of the Flies first page and saying, oh, it's a book about flies, not knowing what actually is the cannibalistic madness of that story. That's the way it is. I read the title, so I know the book. No, that's not the case. Sometimes you need a swift kick in the ass to be able to wake up. And for some of these players, it's a good thing. Now, could it be handled a little bit differently? Absolutely. Is it the only way to project how things are going to transpire? No. But at the same time, until proven otherwise, dion has got to do its best. He has to put people's lives at stake. Coaches, personnel members, scouting department, recruiting, uh, recruiting the department, any one of those people who are as attached to his name, when a new coach comes in, guess what? They are the first shown the door because they want to have their people. So Dion's not just looking out for his team. He's looking out for his entire team. Staff members, personnel people, scouting departments, they're part of the team too. And he's got to do what's best for all involved. Now, if it doesn't work this year, now we can have a conversation. Well, he did things wrong. Well, things didn't go the way he thought. But I'm a person that likes to look at life optimistically glass half full. You got three wins last season. That's a start. You also brought in another slew of transfers that hopefully will be a good foundational baseline moving forward. But if it doesn't work and you don't make changes, we talked about this when it came to Jimbo Fisher. We talked about this right now when it comes to Dabo Sweeney. It goes the exact same way with Dion. It goes the exact same way with a prime candidate like Coach Prime. If things don't start trending upward, you are trending downward. And eventually, the shtick, the stock, the bourgeoisie, the pageantry, the persona, that all goes out the window. So hopefully, things are transpiring in a more prominent light going into year two in Boulder. And as of right now, maybe just handle things a little bit differently. And for those of you that actually are paying attention, go go, go read the article. Actually, go read the article. If you want, I'll give you my, I'll give you my athletic subscription number. You can go ahead and just reach out to me via email. Send me a text message. It's all down there in the link below. Go ahead and do that. That way you can read the article. And actually form an opinion. But but don't don't go on to Twitter and say, I know everything that's going on. When you read a sentence, a paragraph, a quote, and took that, miscued it, threw it back out and said, here is what my opinion is. Your opinion is you don't have all the facts. Make sure before you finalize your finish, you understand every last detail. But comment down below, what's your thoughts on the Deion Sanders situation? What's your thoughts on what's going on with Colorado? Am I making a lot of sense or other people making sense? Am I just a blabbering idiot that's found here on social media? Whatever it is, make sure that you leave a comment and hit subscribe because we're on the race to become the number one YouTube show talking about our favorite sport. Make sure that you also are telling your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, Buffalo fans, Colorado faithful, Big 12 faithful, and college football aficionados everywhere because we're on the race to become not only the number one show, but also the number one college football community. I'm Cole Thompson. Until next time, Colorado and all college football fans. Later.